More now on our top story and those um, controversial comments by Donald Trump. Well, I'm joined now by George Ajahn, an international political consultant who's in Beirut. George, thanks so much for joining us this morning. So what do you make of what um, Donald Trump has said so far? A gaffe or part of a wider strategic plan? Well, it is Christmas time and Trump's big mouth apparently is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, the, the question is what will be the fallout within the Republican Party uh, after these remarks? Well, well, indeed, will be the fallout. I mean, when you look at past, you could call them gaps. Well, past I'll, gaps I'll, I'll tell you this. If, 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 if I was one of the other front-running contenders right now, and, uh, of course, there's a big gap, at least if you look at the polls, between where Trump is at in the numbers and where his nearest rivals are, um, you know, I might be sending some of my junior staffers to have a pint or two with uh, the other competitors and see if there isn't some, some kind of collusion. Because if, um, in the possibilities, um, in order to perhaps boycott the next debate if Trump is allowed, um, I'm sure these discussions will be happening. Because if Trump has reached a point uh, by which the entire political spectrum condemns what he's doing, this may be the opportunity for the Republicans to, to rid themselves of them before anyone casts any votes. Uh, don't forget, there's not going to be a vote cast in a Republican primary or caucus mm -hmm. until February 1st. So we've still got almost two months uh, for this to play out. But you say that, but in the polls, he's leading the way. Despite past comments on Mexicans, women, uh, military veterans, he's still doing well. He is. Uh, but, but again, um, this is you know, very much based on a, a populist um, approach that he's taken. And, and he's very smart. He knows how to manufacture these crises. He knows how to use uh, the media to his advantage. And obviously, it's working for him so far. But not a vote has been cast yet. And the danger for the Republicans is if they, if they keep him in the field, um, and it would take an extraordinary amount of courage, as I just said, for them to, to, to all of them band together uh, to basically say either Trump goes or, or we don't go. Because Trump's a deal maker. He needs, to, he needs to come to the table. If they remove the table, then he's forced to go on his own as a third party candidate, which is another big risk for the Republicans. And, and, and as you rightfully, uh, rightfully note, Obama uh, criticizing and the Democrats saying this disqualifies him as president. This is music to the Democrats' ears because it puts the Republicans in quite a, quite a pickle right now. But do you think he's dangerous in that people, and indeed the American people, actually listen to what he says? I mean, where, where does he get his facts on? Um, the facts he said 25% of Muslims believe violence in American soil is justified, and, and also um, claims that parts of London are radicalized. Now, I haven't carried out any survey, but yeah. I don't know of any parts of London that are radicalized. Yes, well, you know, uh, not many people have, have unfortunately perhaps uh, visited London, um, so that maybe they're not uh, equipped to know. And, you know, as, uh, as you mentioned, some of the surveys that he, he uses as his uh, data points, you know, Frank Gaffney, the Center for Security Policy, I mean, if I were to send him a memo saying that Obama is the secret love child between a Muslim cabal and Martian invaders, he'd be ready, 80% odds he'd be ready to print it by the afternoon. So, you know, there are no share, uh, no shortage of, um, of Looney Tunes out there ready to publish statistics that can be used by a populist candidate like Trump. Uh, you know, the, but the bigger danger here is that it obscures the problem that we have to face. I mean, people are dead because of these attacks. And if we just demonize the entire community, that, that prohibits cooperation, that erodes trust, and that prohibits us from protecting people in the future from these kind of uh, attacks. And lastly, do you think um, he could go all the way? Do, do you think actually he could potentially be the Republican presidential candidate next year? I think he could, I think he could, could go through with, with a, a large number of delegates, perhaps a majority of the delegates. The problem is then if you get to the, the Republican National Convention, there is a Byzantine set of rules in there uh, that he is not equipped to handle. And if the party insiders and elected officials and the Republican establishment as a whole decides they don't want him, they have ways of blocking him at the convention. So we could be in for ex extraordinary drama over the next nine or ten months. So um, I very much look forward to that. All right. Georgia John, thanks so much for talking to us today. Thank you.